Hi YouTube, Darth here. This is Battle Plan, where I talk about all the big picture strategies you can use to help you achieve victory on Battlefield maps. A few times I've joked about making a Battle Plan for Metro, but for as much of a joke as some clustered rounds of Metro can be, I'm going to take a serious shot at this map today. In this video, I'll go over all the tactics, strategies, and tips that you can use to help your team to victory. So let's take a serious overview of Operation Metro. The US team spawns in the south, and the Russian team spawns in the north. This map is a carryover from Battlefield 3 and the only Conquest large map in Battlefield 4 with just three flags. It should be telling that the only difference in the flags between the large 64 player map and a smaller 32 or 24 player version are the two new pathways. The flag configuration remains the same. The result is a mess on 64 player. The capture points on this map are simply Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. There are no vehicles on this map and all the points are within easy walking distance. Alpha is above ground near the Russian spawn, Bravo is just inside the escalators and ticket areas of Metro where all the routes come together, and Charlie is firmly on the American side of the map. Quickly looking at the distances between all the flags, it should be pretty apparent that the Russian team enjoys a slight advantage in travel time to Bravo. With roughly 222 meters of distance between their spawn and Bravo, they have to travel about 40 meters less than the American team. This means that the Russian soldiers can be on Bravo roughly 6 seconds sooner than the American soldiers. This leads to the often lopsided stalemate at Bravo. Make no mistake about it, Metro's natural state is a total and utter stalemate on 64 player. Because the map has very few routes that can be run, and all those routes converge at Bravo, it's pretty much guaranteed that one team will have a huge runaway victory on this map. And that's proven in data as well as more than half the games on Metro end in a runaway victory. It should not surprise you that on non-restricted servers the Russian team wins more frequently as they have the easiest access to Bravo. This actually flips on servers that restrict explosives, but it's still a stalemate. If you're wondering why Metro is the way it is even after the remake, DICE had the chance to fix the map with the re-release but chose not to because it's how people liked it. And therein lies the decision of how you're going to play this map. If you like constant stalemates and are just interested in farming kills, well you can do no better than 64 player Metro. If you want to force a breakthrough, I'll talk about some of the tactics you can employ to do this. But let's look at the most frequent and typical situations on this map. The Russians control the north starting with Bravo and the US team controls the south and Charlie. This is how most games start and end on 64 player Metro. Now, through total and complete brute force, the US team can shove the Russians off Bravo. It's not impossible, I've seen it. Generally, it involves the American team stacking an insane number of soldiers next to the elevators. Alternatively, the Russian team can often push the American team to and off of Charlie by pure weight of numbers. Once the Russian team has pushed the American team from Bravo completely, it's nearly impossible for the American team to come back without some serious intervention or luck. Now, if you're the first kind of player I mentioned, the one that just wants to grind this map, well, have at it, the situation I just described is wonderful. Nothing but meat grinder 24-7. However, if you want to break the monotony, this is where it gets a bit interesting. There are several plausible routes for either team to break through, and I'll talk more about the specifics later in this video. For now, I'm going to give a general overview. Keep in mind, no matter which way you're going, you will have to defeat roughly three lines of defense. First, the front line with the bulk of the forces. These players may even be trying to rush you as well. Second, you'll need to worry about the players camping for kills and stashed back a level. These players are the most likely to stop a flank because their locations are hard to predict. Finally, you'll have to worry about respawns. The fewer the players on the server, the successively fewer enemies you'll have to worry about. Which is why, if you want a bit more mobile game of Metro, 32 players or less is where it's at. 32 player Metro can actually be quite a bit of non-grindy fun. Ultimately, as the Russians or the Americans, you're generally trying to force a breakout. Without brute force, that means capturing Charlie as the Russians or Alpha as the Americans. As the Russians, I find the northern set of stairs are generally the best route, though you can sometimes make it through the Metro 2014 ramp. As the Americans, pushing towards Alpha is a bit more of a challenge as you will more likely have to overcome some major defenses stacked up at Bravo in a greater concentration. Again, the northern set of stairs are a great option, the ramp is my second choice, and the lockers are my least favorite option for Blitzkrieg. But the key to making the breakthrough work on Metro are three things, speed, stealth, and communication. You want to get through the lines of defenders as quickly as possible, there are always respawns and in great supply on either team. Draw as little attention as possible trying to break through and kill only the enemies you need to. Remember that dead men come looking for you and see your movements on their kill screen on normal. Once you're through those lines, you need to find a spot to stay hidden primarily for the third point, communication. 
Get your squad to spawn on you. You've made it. VoIP, chat, whatever you need to do, but the more friendlies you can capture Alpha or Charlie with, the better. You might even want to let your team know that you've made it and what squad you're on. You'll need those bodies to back you up if the enemy tries to defend, comes looking for you, or worse, if you die. If you die, it was all for nothing if you're alone, and it's not easy to make it to the rear points on high-traffic metro games. So here's where the magic happens. If you actually manage to backcap the point, players on the enemy team can be slow to respond. A lot of people on Metro have major tunnel vision. Get it? Tunnel vision? Anyways, you can take this opportunity to then immediately flank scores of them at Bravo. The collapse at Bravo is generally pretty quick, and you'll likely lose Alpha or Charlie in the process of capturing Bravo. But your mission is accomplished. You flip the situation on the map. And that's really the two ways to play this map, attempt to break through or accept the stalemate. Unfortunately, most players go for the latter. In this section, I'm going to talk about four major subjects. I'm going to talk about the spawn behavior on the points, best breakout routes and positions, good capture spots, and the ideal camping positions. First, the spawn behavior. Of all the battle plans I have done, Operation Metro has easily the most bisected spawns of any of them. In fact, no spawn point is shared between the teams. They are all separated by faction. This is actually necessary on Metro, ensuring that both teams have roughly even divisions between any given point. It also lends to the stalemates on higher player counts. Next, let's look at some breakout routes and positions. These are particularly effective if you're a recon with a radio beacon, but just staying safe long enough for your squad to spawn is often good enough. Spawn traps happen with some regularity on Metro. Getting a breakout is often a pretty difficult task and one that not a lot of teams rise to. As the Russians, I find the best routes often take the players through the eastern part of the map and through the lockers. This way you spend the least amount of time visible to the large bulks of enemies. As the Americans, your best hope is to try and make it up the west side of the map using the trains as cover. Generally, I find this route is the least offended and the easiest to make it through. Most campers usually bunker down at the front lines, staircases, or bathroom, so keep these locations in mind as you try to push forward. So let's say you're not spawn trapped. The fuster cluck is at Bravo instead. Again, your goal is going to be to try to get yourself to Charlie or Alpha depending on which team you're playing. As the Russians, I find the northern set of stairs to be the best opportunity for a breakthrough. The problem is, either side of the bottom is almost always defended by very boring players. Assuming that the server allows the use of smoke, I find it very helpful to smoke these specific positions. Once the smoke is in place, I then make my way to cover, put it to my back, and clear in an arc. Smoke. Cover. Clear. Once it's clear, I make my way to the elevator base room and leapfrog my way forward. I can then either turn and flank the back of the elevators, or continue running up the train route to make it to Charlie. As the Americans at Bravo, the southern staircase and eastern staircase are usually hopeless death traps on 64 player. Instead, you'll want to focus your efforts on the back, northern staircase, or possibly the western ramp. Making a breakthrough is going to require precision, luck, and speed. It is highly unlikely you'll encounter no defenders at these two positions. More than likely, you'll encounter at least two or three. I find the western route is the safest cut to cover, tearing through the top ramp defenders and making it out. However, the stairs route can provide a bit of surprise as not a lot of defenders check past the initial outlet. You do, however, run into all the respawning Russians, so again, speed is of the essence. Now that you've broken through, or maybe you're just in an advantageous situation, let's talk about some good spots to capture these back cap flags. As a Russian on Charlie, you're actually fairly exposed. There's really only two spots where I feel relatively safe from either returning defenders or respawns. The first is next to the trains on the western side. There's a small bit of capture area here where you can have an okay view on the point. The other is closer to the eastern side of the point and tucked into a corner. Honestly, Charlie is far more difficult to capture than Alpha, and you'll need at least one teammate to help you grab this point. As the Americans on Alpha, you've got a lot of great options. Both buildings on Alpha can be used to capture the point, and there's a ton of spaces that can be used to hide you and your squad. The staircases in these buildings are not easily ascended by responders, particularly if you have shotguns or other explosives. If you can get a squad on Alpha, they are very hard to remove without serious investment of players from the Russian team, an investment that will often cost the Russians control at Bravo. There's a couple of locations that I want to highlight for the recon players out there. First, I'll talk about Alpha. While there are tons of spots to store a beacon, there are two positions in particular that newer players don't think to look. The first is on the street on the western side of the map. 
This is far enough off the beaten path that most players don't look for it or even hear it. The second is on the opposite side among some scaffolds. Again, this is hidden enough and far enough from typical routes that it gets missed. Next, as the Russians on Charlie, there are a couple of locations that are somewhat useful to stick a radio beacon. My personal favorite is inside the bathroom. I like to cut a small path through the back of the bathroom and then stick the beacon facing the direction I just came. Remember that players spawn in the direction you're facing when you place the beacon. The next is amongst the trash pile on the eastern portion of the map. This doesn't generally attract the attention of returning defenders, but can be picked up by players coming from the US spawn. My last position is anywhere in the near spawn areas. For the most part, you'll be combating players coming from Bravo, not the US spawn, so not a lot of Americans come looking back here. Sadly, all these spawn beacons will give themselves away if the American team gets close enough or if your squad repeatedly keeps coming from the same location. Finally, let's talk about if you're a camping son of a gun. First, you make me sick. Second, there's a lot of positions that can cause maximum frustration to anybody actually trying to force a breakout. I know because I've seen them all. Let's talk about Stalemate Central, Bravo. This point has got a number of locations that provide some cover while at the same time giving advantageous killing fields. From the southern side looking north, I think my favorite position is behind the turnstiles right in the middle. This position will give you the ability to defend either the western or eastern approach from the north. It's flanked by the alley route, but as long as you keep your eyes aware of your minimap, it shouldn't be a problem. If you're a bit further back, there's a nice gap between the vending machine and the wall on the southern side of the elevators. This position is a bit dangerous because of explosive spam, but otherwise provides a nice slit to combat Russians pouring out to the point. On the underside of Bravo, either side of the northern stairs provides generally a good position to intercept any would-be attackers. You'll want to put yourself out of the line of sight of Russians on the top side of the stairs. So anywhere on the eastern wall or western wall works pretty well, or on the flanks behind the stairs. You can also cover the northern stairs fairly well from a rubble pile just west of the elevator room and south of the western ramp. It's extremely hard to remove a camper from this position. Now let's reverse it, looking south, so you're probably Russian now. One particularly advantageous set of points is on either side of the northern staircase. You'll have a great viewpoint of at least one side of the staircase, and the other side is almost always covered by an opposite defender. If this is too close to the action for you, you can also cover the staircase and the western ramp by moving a bit backwards towards the end of the lockers on the turnstiles. This position actually provides a nice bipod location for maximum camping. Finally, the western office provides a good view of the northern stairs, western side stairs, ramp, and some of the southern stairs with a fair bit of cover. That being said, you're also potentially vulnerable from all these locations, so you have to keep an eye on the whack-a-mole map to see where the threats are plausible. There's literally tons of spots like this that I could talk about, but these are some of the most common ones. I'm sure with enough time spent on Metro, you'll see the rest or invent your own. The map literally teems with camping positions. I want to talk about some general theories I have on loadouts for Metro. I find that Assault and Support generally have the best time on this map because they have the most to offer. I generally see Camping Russians almost exclusively running support for the explosives and ammo, while the Americans are almost always filled up to the brim with Assaults to Chain Revive at Bravo. These are pretty good starting points. In general, if you're camping and the server allows it, find the loadouts with the explosives. If you're going to flank the enemy team, you'll want something that can kill scores and quickly and perhaps silently. I generally prefer a powerful LMG like the M240B or M249 silenced. An automatic shotgun is also pretty effective if easily noticed, but definitely superior if you're on alpha because of the close quarters nature. Now, if you're not into camping on this map, you'll probably want to think about recon with smoke grenades. The beacon is extremely useful in getting your squad to successfully back capture Alpha or Charlie. It can also be used to re-establish if you get offed in an untimely manner. The smoke is often necessary to create the screening effect. Ultimately, for your loadout, you're going to want to consider which of the two roles you're trying to play on this map. Are you going for the win, or simply a grinding jerk? Something I haven't talked about yet in this video are the rules that many servers run on PC to make this map viable. Operation Metro is pretty terrible and often ends in unfun stalemates or spawn traps. Understandably, a lot of servers that run this 24-7 apply rules to dampen the crappiness of this map. Some ban certain choices like explosives, shotguns, or even smoke. Others block behaviors like capturing Charlie or Alpha and punish teams that all cap the map by nuking them. Most run very aggressive auto-balancing that will push even top-ranked players to the losing team. All of these things suck, but Operation Metro sucks more. These servers wouldn't be populated for very long without extreme measures. But despite that, people keep coming back for more. 
I often call Metro everybody's favorite terrible map. It's easy to get kills on, farm KD, practice aim, and earn experience. I take it as a personal challenge to try to break up the horrible monotony of the map whenever I play it, and to try and apply clever strategy to wreck the enemy's strangleholds. If you can rise to the challenge and keep the enemy guessing, or even plug up their attempts to break out, that's the match. Or at least, that's the plan. That's it for this episode of Battle Plan. Be sure to suggest the map for the next episode, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.